because if somebody really wakes up and starts doing things that <clears throat> our ancestors did for real, they in trouble. You know, those who are in control, it's all about information. It's all about seeing who knows what. That's why at every conference is at least one agent just there to see what we know, what we don't. Guys, welcome to the first episode of the Dress Rehearsal for Death podcast. I am your host, Caleb Kelly Myers, and I am honored to be joined by my first ever guest, Akira Ramsu Iyi of the Tamarian Institute. My man, Ramsu, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing great, man. That was a wonderful introduction right there. And I love the name of the podcast, by the way. That's that's awesome. Thank you so much, dude. I I really appreciate that. It was um the name has been a long time in the making. Um, you know, I guess before we get started, I I'll give a little intro behind uh, what I'm trying to do here. We're on the the main Entheoplex IG page tonight, just to sort of live premiere uh, the podcast series and get it started. Uh, we also want to give this whole month the opportunity to introduce the main faces behind the 2024 Tamarian Sciences and Survival Summit coming up here in April as a part of our Miami Entheogens Project event series. Um, so this is going to be the new addition to the biannual rotation. Uh, last year, we had a lot of folks come down and join us for the first ever Miami Entheogenic Conference, uh, which was a more traditional psychedelic style conference. But this year, we're switching things up and we're bringing out some of the other sides of the Tamarian Institute down here in Florida. Um, and we're really we're really looking forward to doing that. So, guys, this is the Dress Rehearsal for Death podcast. Uh, if you have not already, I'd really appreciate it if you can go give us a follow at DR4D podcast. That's going to be the IG page uh, that we're going to look to develop for uh, the for this project. You can also follow us on YouTube at DR4D podcast. That's where all of the full episodes are going to be released. So we're going to take the next probably 15 minutes or so and just uh, jump in a little bit about the events here. Uh, even give the audience a chance to ask any questions uh, and then we will be cutting the live short and if you guys want to catch the rest of the full episode and our interview with Ramsu here uh, you will be able to catch that on YouTube uh, it's going to be posted up for you this weekend um, so Ramsu my man how are things up in Detroit what's been going on um Detroit's cool we're actually getting some um, unusual warm weather you know so that's all you know, and the sun is out a little bit, so uh, uh, our mood is uh, a little bit better, you know, and the uh, Lions were finally winning, so um, Detroit is, is pretty cool here in Detroit, so. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. I, I hope it stays that way for you guys. I know um, April, I think a lot of faces were down here looking to get a dose of the sun after some much needed cold, so, um, you know, we'll always have that ready for you guys, but if you're not freezing your butts off, that's great to hear. Um, so I was up there for the, uh, martial arts conference in August. And let me say, my mind was blown. Um, you know, I almost feel, you know, a, another full circle again, um, you know, having been to a Detroit psychedelic conference and then, you know, having to migrated a lot of that energy down to Florida. Um, I think, that's the goal for this upcoming event this year around is to give our folks here in Florida a chance to see uh, the the survival and also, you know, martial arts side of Tamarian, which they only really got a sneak peek of at the, the Entheogenic Conferences last year. So uh, do you want to, I guess, give a little bit of intro as to, you know, just sort of our intentions behind uh, the, the, this upcoming summit here and uh, what we're going to bring out on Sunday? Oh, um, you know, one thing about this event, you know, I feel like it was, um, you know, one of my father's, you know, dreams to these type of events happen, you know, because, you know, all of this kind of stuff was far and few and, you know, not 
available to us for the most part. So, you know, I just want to give props to y'all again for, you know, you know, uh, having these type of events in, in Miami or, you know, wherever, you know, all of these different places, because, you know, any psychedelic conference, you had to go to uh, overseas and stuff like that. And, you know, I felt like my father um, lit a spark and, you know, the flame is keep going, you know, throughout this country amongst folks who um, normally wouldn't be able to have this information. And, uh, you know, and Miami, you know, first of all, it's a great place to be, you know, it's, the weather is great. And, you know, um, to bring the martial arts and, you know, and uh, mycology and all of that stuff down there is, you know, like I said, it, you know, it seems like a dream come true. And, you know, we're going to be bringing all of that down there with, with the survival uh, aspect as well, because that's all a part of martial arts. And believe it or not, mushrooms is a part of martial arts. You know, the whole reason, you know, my father got into the mushrooms because it was a part of our system, you know, so it all ties in together. So, you know, we're going to be bringing a little bit of that down there and sharing some information, you know, you know, a uh, couple other instructors from the Tamarian Institute is going to be coming out there with me and it's going to be, a, you know, and one thing too, not to get off subject, it's always a good time. We always have an you know, fun, it's family out there. You meet family from, you know, past lifetimes. You know, you meet somebody for the first time, but it's not the first time you meet them. And that's how these uh, psychedelic uh, events are. You know, even the martial arts ones, it ties in together. But you see people and you'd be like, oh man, I, you know, I know you from somewhere, but it's your first time. And it's a, like a family reunion. It's a galactic, you know, you know, because it's a galactic, um, alien type of human beings meet meet up. You know what I'm saying? You know the different the black sheep uh, of of the country all come to one place, and you know, and we always got that vibe. You know, we we meet so many people through these conferences that that's a lifelong friendship. You know what I'm saying? And you know that's really what it's about. You know, the the camaraderie of like minded people or the spark of um, other people who are into the same thing that you're into or have a calling, you know, just like Neo in the matrix, he was looking for something, you know, and that's when Morpheus gave, you know, gave him the red or the blue pill, which is the red or blue mushroom, which is the psychedelic, because once he took the, the red or the blue pill, that's when he went through the wormhole. And that's basically what we're trying to do is wake up people up out of the matrix. And that's what these events do regardless on you know other little things but this these are extremely powerful events and that's you know that's one of the main reasons for this is the it's like um you know hogwarts or you know it's 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 um it's a it's, it's a great it's a great event you know you can't come and not have a good time you know, well, so. and now, you know, th as, as a vessel in Detroit, you know, this has been what's been going on for the last few years. And to be able to move this into an entire other state, not only to do that, but to do it on college campuses, multiple college campuses, really brings the Hogwarts thing to a whole nother level because we're turning a real school uh, into an interdimensional school for a weekend. Uh, and college students are, you know, popping through and getting to getting to see and 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 their curiosities are getting sparked and you know I, I already have some faces from from last year that are like you know what what's this going to look like this year and I'm just like well you're just going to have to show up and find out but I think what's really interesting is that you know last year we had a whole lot of people come who were really more from the psychedelic um you know sort of mindset and they only got a little bit of the dose of the martial arts and this year i think we really want to flip the script because now we need the 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 martial arts people to come see this the psychedelic end of it and for both worlds to sort of fuse um and i think that there are college students and and folks in the community down here who are who are on both ends of that spectrum and are, are excited to converge so 
um, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to it. But tonight's topic specifically uh, is the is the man behind the madness, who is your father, Ahati Kalindi E, that we're getting ready to honor. So uh, I think anybody new here uh, who's joining in to get a little bit of info who might not even uh, have been with us up to this point definitely needs to hear that. And there's been no one more that I've been waiting to uh, pass the mic on that topic to other than you. So. Uh, you know, where would you like to start on that topic? Because I think that that could go on for lifetimes, as you said, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, growing up, you know, my not just because he's my father, but I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But he was literally the greatest man I knew, greatest man I ever came across, the greatest man I've ever seen. Um, I would, he was possibly one of the best martial artists on this planet in the past thousand years and once again i'm not saying that because he's my father is this is what i hear from other great martial artists is from other great people they give my father honor so this is all i heard so it's not just me you know my my father is you know no so it's battle tested um just an example i used to um i met a guy and um he was talking about, you know, all of the stuff that he wanted to do. You know, I want to travel the world and, you know, and I'll bring up, you know, I'm like, oh, my father, he traveled the world. He'd been here, 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 here. He'll bring up something else he wanted to do. Man, I want to do this. My father, this, that, and the third. And he busts out, yo, your father must have been a great man. I'm like, I'm like, dang, I didn't even realize how much I was talking about him and how, you know, how much, you know, how great he was. Cause, you know, once again, he is my father. So, you know, he's just, you know, he's, he's regular to me, but then I'm, he was, I was like, yeah, he really is great. And then he was like, what's your father's name? I was like, you know, uh, Ahati Kalindi. He was like, oh, no wonder, you know, I know your father, you know, and, um, uh, like I said, where do I, where do I begin on who he was? He was, um, he was very, he was very smart. His memory was impeccable. He could remember a comic book from 1963 in the bubble, what the Flash said to Batman, you know, what page and all that kind of stuff. He remembered everything. He was well read, had thousands, just books in the house that are just, it's thousands of them, and he read them all. Um, but one thing about Baba, he was really an explorer for real. He was really about adventure. You know, he, you know, that's what he, that was one he said it's, it's not over you know it's, it's, we still can go for the same uh, type of pictures and all of that kind of stuff and and that's what led him to his entheogenic use and martial arts like I said he was one of the baddest martial artists on this planet but you know besides physically he was in search for okay what else is what else is is it because you know everybody talks about the spiritual aspect of martial arts and stuff like that once he you know started meeting certain people and getting into certain societies and things like that that pretty much um gave him certain things that created an altered state of consciousness and that's when he started to dive into the mushroom and um you know, these events that are going on in April and stuff like that, people don't realize we were having secret meetings in in basements and now, you know, look at us. And, you know, and it's all because of him. And people don't realize that he actually had to go through some things to be able to talk about mushrooms publicly. You know, he, you know, it wasn't just something that he was just going to do. He had to um, do some stuff to talk about it publicly but he was Kalindi he could do whatever he wanted to do and um yeah he was just a phenomenal man and he he always talked about pushing the envelope and boldly going where no man has gone before you know and that's where I get my mushroom use from you know um a lot of people you know I'm gonna be all over the place but I'm just speaking but uh, a lot of people look at mushrooms as just hold on as just a healing um they look at it as just a healing aspect or you know i'm doing it only when i feel a certain way 
you know, I just need to get over this trauma and stuff like that, which is very necessary, which we all need that. But you can also, you know, mushrooms is much more than that. That's the only thing that I really want to convey. And he wanted to convey. It's much more than you diminish the power of it if it's something that you only do because you feel like something's wrong or you're broken or you need something to be fixed. It is beyond this dimension and reality what mushrooms are. And if you go at it as a warrior, you know, or, you know, as a martial artist, it, you go at it in a completely different way. You go at it to gather information, martial knowledge, power, to be able to withstand, to be able to go where no man has gone before. And that's what he, you know, he loves Star Trek and all of that kind of stuff because that's all mushroom knowledge and information. Go where no man has gone before. Let's go farther than it can go. Let's become something greater. Mushrooms, you know, can completely turn you into Superman, but we kind of went in a direction that is, you know, you know, in a in a in a different direction with it. And and I get it because you know people do need to get over certain things. My whole thing is I don't want people to get caught up into that's all it is because that's the beginning. And once you get past all that, that's when you start becoming a true man of power. My father was a real deity of power. He just, you know, people people say all the time, you know, I mean, I'm a spiritual being, have a human experience, but dealing with mushrooms, you get a true understanding of that. You know what I'm saying? He was... He came here to pretty much wake people up. He was, you know, I'm coming to teach these people martial arts. I'm here to wake all certain folks up. And, you know, you know, he was he was a phenomenal man. He it was I've seen him and heard many a stories of him doing the unbelievable, the unthinkable. You know, he he was he wasn't human. You know, he was a, a true sorcerer. Had real man. Not what I've, you know, I've seen a lot of spiritual folks, but I've only seen a few people who had real magic, who had real power, who had, who was the truth for real. You know, it's, it's not every day. It's not a whole lot of folks out there who are really what they say they are, you know, and, you know, I've, I've, I know who, you know, dealing with mushrooms, I can see who is what. And, you know, I don't know how I got all the way over there, but he was, he was, words can't describe who he was. He was beyond this world. His, the way he thought, the way he was, you know, he was one of the manliest men you could possibly meet. You know, he, you know, people think I'm manly. He made me look like a little girl, you know, just the way he talked. The way he looked, everything about him was, you know, he was the perfect example of a man as well, just, you know, through everything that he did. You know, when the martial arts ain't just about punching, fighting, and kicking, and being able to beat everybody up. It's about how you live your life. It's about um, being a human, a good human being that can, that you, that people can rely on, being there for people. But he was, you know, I don't even know where to, people ask me that question and I have a million answers. But as soon as I get to talking, I'm like, dang, it's, it's so much. He was unbelievable. He, um, he did so much. It's unbelievable. Well, I think, and I can speak on behalf of many of those who are in the room currently with us as well. Um, but the tremendous amount of work that you know you and the Tamarian Institute are continuing to do to carry on that legacy is of the utmost importance, not only to the psychedelic, but also the martial arts community. And uh, you know, doing these events and you know seeking to expand the web uh, as we're doing, you know, it's 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 an honor to be a part of. And you know, for all of us, we we are tremendously thrilled to see you taking the torch and uh, 
you know, to have seen that back in August with this first martial arts conference was incredible. And, you know, we're really looking forward to, to continuing to see that in April. And, um, you know, we all understand what a tremendous um, transition it was to, you know, have lost Baba and, you know, what that brings on your shoulders and, you know, what does the next, you know, in, in light of this, what does the next 10 years for Tamarian really look like for you? Is that something that you have given thought to uh, and, and, and can articulate on? Is there, you know, beyond continuing um, these events, what, um, I know that's a dense question, but. Yeah, I mean, just trying to build, uh, build up the school getting an actual building, you know, to where we can, um, a headquarter, you know, we, we train in many to have our own school where we can put up our shrine and stuff like that. Um, it is pretty much my goal at the moment. You know, um, like I said, we train at a few different places and things like that, but really just, uh, getting that going and just pretty much, um, running with the torch. He, um, putting on these events and um, letting people know certain things. And, you know, um, it, it, it was a, you know, first happened, it was a very hard transition. Um, it's a lot easier now. And um, dealing with mushrooms is, you know, one of the things I want to uh, convey is, you know, mushroom gives you access, you know, it gives you access to the dead. It's literally practicing death. It is going to those places. You saw the Black Panther and you saw when T'Challa took the mushroom and went in the dark or um, they called it a purple herb, but took the mushroom because that's what it was. When T'Challa woke up and saw T'Chaka and was actually where his father was is what I'm trying to convey to people. Most people are not taking enough and not doing these things. I was in, um, I was in Denver and I was on a, uh, I was on this panel speaking and I pretty much said this exact same thing because it was a wellness conference. And I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it makes me feel very well to know that I still have access to my parents. And, you know, we all still miss people in the physical, but to have access is very healing. And then, and then somebody on the end, no shade to them. They was like, you know, I feel this brother's pain and his hurt. And I'm like, and I'm with, I didn't get the mic back because I was about to say, wait, wait, time. hold the phone. My whole point of bringing that up is I don't have that hurt or that pain because I have direct access, you know, and that's, and I really want people to understand that. It's like when I say it, it it's going over their head, you know, because they'll shake their head and look at me, but I'm like, no, you can go to these places, see and sit with them face to face, not even like this live, face to face, be there with them. You know, that's how our ancestors did it. That's how it's been done. That was the secret of all spiritual practices. It was something you took to go into the other realms to get this information from, from your ancestors, from the deities. You go get them yourself. You don't have no preacher telling you. You didn't have no books to read. You went to go get it. You went to go see it. And, it's, and sometimes it's very difficult. That's why you have to go at it as a warrior. A lot of that stuff that people say is silly to me. No offense to nobody, but telling me you can't uh, take that, take mushrooms like that because it makes your stomach hurt is silly. You know, sometimes your stomach hurts. So what? As a warrior, I w you can't be no warrior, and you can be no warrior in an African society and say and tell and say, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. It make my stomach hurt. You know, that's that's looked at as cowardly. So if you look at it as a warrior and say, I don't care if it makes my stomach hurt. I don't care if it's difficult. I don't care if it's hard. I don't care if I, you know, I'm going and I'm a powerful being and I'm going to go through it no matter what. I don't care what it is. You withstand it. That's what being a warrior is, you know, because taking the doses that get you to these places is difficult. Eating it in itself is difficult. Just that task itself. And the mushrooms and the ancestors know that it's difficult. They don't care. You do it anyway. That's the whole purpose 
It's supposed to be tough. It's supposed to be hard. It builds your tenacity. It builds your power. Nothing worth going to get is supposed to be easy. Same thing. It's like working out. You know, you want to, how do I get a six pack uh, in, in six weeks? You don't get a six pack in six weeks. You know, I mean, some people can diet and all of that, but I'm talking about it's, it's hard. It's supposed to be hard. You know, what is, gives it value to eat 40 grams of mushrooms and go on this ex dream journey to get a certain power to be able to you know do certain things that nobody else can do why because nobody else is willing to go get it you know nobody else is willing to go that far why because it's, I, i'm not eating the mushrooms this now I'm, i get nauseous you know i you know we gotta we gotta be grown we gotta be we gotta do some grown people stuff we can't and when I say grown, I mean spiritually grown. You know, I, I couldn't imagine, you know, our ancestors acting the way that we act. We are so much more powerful than what we think we are. As soon as we make our mind up and, and decide that, you know, okay, I'm about to go. Imagine if, you know, I know it's not for everybody, but imagine if a few folks say, you know what, I'm going to take 50 grams of mushrooms. And I'm going, I don't care how long it take, I'm going to go into the dark and come back with some knowledge and information that's going to change, you know, this reality. Because reality changes all the time anyway. It might as well, you be some factor in it, you know, but people don't want to do that. People want to, you know, stay where they at and keep, um, and keep it in a position of, you know, it's medicine. You know, well, like I said, it's nothing wrong with medicine because certain people do need to get over some things, but don't keep it at that. Come at it as the warrior. Be strong. Nothing. And and when I'm always talking about healing, what I want people to understand is that what you say is very powerful. I hear people saying this. What you say is your... So if you constantly talk about I need healing or we all need this healing you're constantly and you're so I accept that reality I am good I am powerful I am Ramasu I stand against anything you know even if I do have some trauma way deep down I deal with it on a trip and did and whenever you know I have it come up I deal with it then and face it as a warrior and get past it I don't sit and dwell on it and be like, oh, oh I gotta gotta keep going at it, keep going at it. No, I I speak power into existence. I speak, I speak unimaginable power. I'm Ramasu. I'm not I'm not anybody else. I am a Hati son. I don't need any of that that other people need. I don't need to do what other people do. I go to the hard stuff. I'm going at it hard. I have to do, I do what other people don't do. And I know most people ain't going to sit up there and do what I, you know, I'm just expressing how people brought it to us and how we do it, you know? So I looked at it completely different. I never looked at it as a healing thing. I looked at it as an explorer to go see what the other realms have to offer or what really is what and seeing it for myself and being, whoa, what I am, cannot be hurt what i am doesn't need healing i come here as a human being to understand that to experience it, stuff like that but what i am can't be hurt what i am is invincible you know and shoot if, if i'm wrong i'd rather have a belief of being invincible and be wrong on that belief than to think that think anything other think anything else because these mushrooms are access and is one of, is is the most powerful thing that we can do to go get information from the other realms and become what we truly are supposed to become. If you look at it different and take it serious, it'll take you serious. You know, the mushrooms are conscious itself. They know when. Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry, you cut off. You're good. No, but the mushrooms know. Who taking it serious? They know what you're looking for. 
you know, your higher self and all of that. They know, they they look at you and see, okay, is he going to go deep? No, oh, no, he's going to go deep. Oh, this trip is really rough on him. Oh, and then after those extremely rough trips, because some, some of my trips, believably, I, I get done and say, I ain't never doing that shit again. If I get through this, I'm never doing it again. But the mushrooms will wait to see if you come back. You know, oh, he, oh, he back? All right, now let's do something. Because you have, this stuff takes, you know, a long time sometimes. You have a person take one trip and be like, oh, I didn't really get much from it. Okay. No, go back again. Go see. This is a long, I just, I think I just hit my 20-year mark of take, taking um mushrooms. So, you know, and I'm still, you know, still, I'm not deep in the ocean, in my opinion. You know, I'm still, you know, learning. You know, just because I've been doing it for 20 years, I'm not saying that I have any leg up on anybody else because we all have access to this. When folks start actually taking some serious doses and some serious, you know, mindset at it, you know, people don't go in the dark, you know, people don't. And that's one thing, too. Like, I was taught that. Most people, you know, take mushrooms and go in on a sunny day, you know, which is good. You know, sometimes I do it myself. I like, you know, sitting in nature and speaking with the trees and looking how beautiful the birds are. But, you know, you know, that's that should be sometimes, you know, the deep, the deep, hard stuff is where the true power comes from. Um, the deep. Yeah, that's that's a that's actually a bar right there. The deep, hard stuff is where the true power comes from, because. You can't get nothing easy. You don't get your true power from the beautiful trips and love and just feeling good. The challenges invoke power inside of you. The challenges are what make you who you are. To be able to withstand anything in any dimension in any realm gives you power. And I would look and I love having that power because there's other beings and other spirits and stuff that I love and protect so no matter what comes through here I don't care who it is what it is spiritual you know you better come at me a different type of way because I don't care what what it is you know and that's just the whole mindset and energy that I have as at it and don't get me wrong because I don't have some of the most beautiful I don't see some of the most beautiful things in that you could possibly see, but you know, you know, a lot of my uh, power has can come from dealing with things. Yeah. You know, I took a thirty gram trip. I had to deal with a lot, and getting past it is what made you know would build my tenacity. Going going away for a long time, dealing with a lot of hard work, coming back gives you a certain power that other people don't have and it's extremely rare and it and when you do those type of things you have a sight of being able to see certain things but i can see you know when you get to a certain level you can see who else has been there and i've been waiting to see you know i've seen a couple but it's it's so it's so dim it's a light you see when somebody else has been to a deep deep place or certain places or in certain realms you know, you go to those places and you carry some of that in it. When somebody else goes, they carry that energy. So you lock and see, like, oh, it's something you can you can see that. And, you know, and that's one of the things that, you know, uh, as a warrior, you want to be able to see. Because if you see a, a true warrior walk up with that energy and you have to battle that person, you know it's not going to be a regular everyday, you know, situation. It might not be physical at all. You know, he may be saying some incantations or doing some sort of hand things and stuff like that that you have to deal with. You know, you do your incantations, you speak your languages. And that's, you know, especially with the Tamarian Blue. Tamarian Blue is, you know, the old African strain that got old information. You know, mushrooms itself, you know, have extraterrestrial information from outer space. But, you know, our strain got is the warrior strain that got, you know, our shit in it. Yeah. But, but yeah, so, well, you know, I just really, 
yeah, I just really want people to understand that not is not just a um it's not just a you know a fun thing, you know, because I talk to a lot of people about mushrooms, they just automatically think, you know, party and having a good time. And it, but saying that I want people to understand that it is nothing wrong with partying and having a good time with it sometimes because you know shit's fun but don't look at it as only that you know i had an analogy i'm like you know people let's say mushrooms was um not just the regular internet the super internet where you can literally just learn anything you can go on there you can look up anything you could do anything whatever it is you want to learn you can learn it whatever it is you want to do you can do it on the internet that's mushrooms but you know what you do every time you get on the internet is just go straight to a porn site and and that and all of a sudden other people go into the porn site so the whole, instead of calling it the super internet or the super you know super computer you call it just the porn thing like like no with this you can do anything with it you know, you can learn anything with it because mushrooms has so much information so it's older than this planet has been sent out through different galaxies and different dimensions it has extraterrestrial information. And, you know, we, you know, we using it just for this. No, we have to use it for a multitude of different things. It is, it's, it's an unbelievable, we still don't, I don't even, we don't even know what it is. We still learning, we still trying to figure it out. Is beyond our understanding at this point. You know, these that, the mushroom experience at a at a, a mega dose is, is is inexplainable. You don't explain. You can't explain some of this. When I took when I took my highest dose, some of that stuff you can't tell people that stuff. You know, you can't tell people this dimension is like that because it won't compute. It'll be what you mean. You know, so but you have to you know experience them places to be able to deal with it yeah but say you know like i said you know we come to this lifetime just to see what it's like to you know feel pain and uh and to know what it's like to need uh need money and need to eat food and all of that kind of stuff because which if you a real uh spirit you beyond all of that this is just a learning experience and it ain't nothing but a second in eternity you know, this ain't this ain't even a second. Well, so for those, you know, we don't want you guys to think that this is, you know, this is an event for those who are who are strictly entering those realms themselves, because having the voice on the stage to hear right now is the important part in the stage that we're at. Um, you know, this was a honing beacon for people and has grown larger and larger and you know i especially want people who are of my age and are of the coming generation to be able to you know find their place that they need to be if this is something that has called to them and has brought them into the deeper layers beyond it just being healing um and 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 especially as a martial artist too you know i in, in my younger years thought that whatever I was doing was for competition gain or glory, but really this, you know, my entire life as a, as a, as a martial artist and fencer has changed because of the, the spiritual work that is, that has developed because of the mushroom um, and, and, and people not only of the, the African disciplines and, and, um, and fencers like me, but anybody that is a martial artist needs to understand that there's a deeper layer to what, they, what they're practicing and what they're doing um, and, and to have a, a place to look for those answers. So, you know, this is a very multidimensional space here that we're looking to create. Um, you know, this, this coming event here in April is going to not be as focused on the, um, the you know, medicinal utilizations, as you said, and, and, and really hone in more on the on the explorative elements and you know what you end up when we talk about the information that we're pulling out of these spaces and what we're looking to bring back down um, the event is going to really be divided into 
three segments. We're going to look to start it with, you know, the, the martial arts side of things. And, you know, typically when we have our, our psychedelic conferences, they, uh, the, the audience gets to see, uh, you know, general demonstrations. But I think what we really want you guys to understand is that, um, even without being able to participate in the Tamarian Institute on a monthly or weekly basis, you know, if you if you come participate in this workshop, you will leave with with skills and things that you can start implementing into your own practice. And, you know, it might take a year or two or three for it to really set in what you even experienced or encountered. But I mean, I can tell you, like, <laughs> just from the last couple years man like there are things still sitting in with me that it's like oh wow i'm not even realizing how this is affecting me day to day just by having witnessed it and even gotten my fingers wet a little bit and just trying it out um you know so I, we're looking forward to you know having that a lot of expressed in both uh dance applications and then also some you know really applicable urban self-defense methods um you know, because I think, you know, one thing that high dose mushroom exploration opens you up to, as you said, is that it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And, you know, there's a lot of folks out here who are, you know, in this healing dimension and are and are reaching a lot of really deep, beautiful places in themselves, but they forget that, you know, the world still has things that you have to look out to and, and have to remain strong for um, and, and to be able to develop your strength in those ways and, and to be more capable you know, we don't all have to be the vigilante and Batman and Robin out here, but I think it's reasonable for anybody, especially at a college age, especially to to be, um, you know, proficient even in understanding uh, a little bit of what it takes to be able to defend yourself. Um, and then and coming up in the, the middle segment of the event uh, is going to be an actual, you know, sort of daytime simulated version of a little bit of what you guys do at the survival camp. So I would love if you could open the floor to that a little bit, um, because, you know, like you said, going in with the with the mushroom information, uh, something that I think we all come out of, you know, really doing the work is understanding that with the way the world is evolving, uh, things might not look the way that they do right now. Uh, and that could happen very, very soon. And I think that anyone who is in the psychedelic space and is not creating conversations about uh, how we can evolve our consciousness to better prepare for the way the world is evolving itself, um, you know, is, is definitely missing a lot of the picture. So before we jump into the, the you know, the third segment, I'll, I'll let you open the floor on the survival piece a little bit. Um, and Michael uh, is a sense. Um, survival. Everybody should know, you know, how to survive. And we've always, um, Tamarian Institute has always um, been big on that because a lot of people, um, you know, like I said, Baba was one of those people who he was a, you know, big thinker. So I grew up um, knowing how to build fires and uh, knowing how to you know, purify water, you know, how to, you know, what plants and things like that are edible in, in your environment. Miami's terrain like that, but, you know, uh, we're probably going to be sticking mainly to urban survival and things like that, because a lot of people um, would <laughs> about to say, you know, you got in your, right in your city, you have a lot of resources, you know, right, right on your block. You know, don't try to go off to the woods and be, you know, uh, you know, uh, a woodsman. You don't have to be. You know, those are last resorts. But uh, you know, being a, a what I like to call a doomsday prepper and stuff like that. I know it's not the best name, but it is essential to everybody to know, you know, what to do in certain situations. You don't want to be um, asked out, you know, in a in a survival situation. So we always preach um, having your own garden, having, you know, having food stocked up, um, knowing how to purify water, you know, um, all of those type of things, you know, how to, how to build your own shelter if, you know, if you're ever in that situation, what to do in this situation, you know, you know, you have to be a thinker, that's part of martial arts, you know, so, um, you know, like I, like I said before, you know, martial arts is not just kicking and punching, it's knowing what to do in certain situations, and, you know, I, I, it surprises me on how many people don't 
think this way. You know, they wait for something to happen and then, oh, shoot, let me run out and grab some things when those things should have already been at your home available to you. Um, yeah, I mean, there's it, so much, you know, I could, right now, I, I'm all over the place because it's like, okay, we can talk about that or that or that, but survival is essential. You have to know something. You can't, you know, as as an adult, you have to know these things, if, you know, because you, if you have a family and children, they rely on you. So, and that's what it's about. It's about, you know, uh, it's about your family that's with you. It's about those who are around you, you know, uh, protection in those situations, you know, um, you know, having certain weapons and stuff like that, uh, uh, knowing what to, what's edible in your environment if you have no food, um, you know, little things, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's so much. And I feel like people just need to have, you know, some sort of basis of if something happens, let me, you know, let me make sure I'm prepared. At least have this, you know, let me at least have a couple months of food in the pantry just in case something shuts down because something can happen at any time. You know, you want to have plans with your family. <laughs> if something happens, we all meet up over here, you know, uh, all of that kind of stuff we're going to be talking about. Um, it, we ain't, I was about to say it ain't too much uh fire burning in Miami. You ain't got to stay warm, but you might have to boil water or something like that. You know, just depends on the situation. So you know, we definitely gonna have a a beautiful um survival piece for when we ever we go out there, and um you know that's that's a part of what we do. It's it's second nature, um, to me, and I want those who are you know good people who I like not to be, you know. Um, not to be in a messed up situation when all that they needed was to have, you know, a, a water barrel in their backyard or something like that, you know, just something, you know, and, and, and just little things, have a, a water purifier, stuff like that. You'd be able to get gather water throughout, you know, you know, without, you know, um, without getting sick. It's so little stuff, having first aid kits, you know, somebody it's gets sad hurt. because I think people get caught on uh, either end of a, of a spectrum and they think that if they don't, you know, they either have to have a, a doomsday bunker prepared in their house and have two million dollars put into it or, you know, they just completely have to throw up the hat and say, well, I'm going down with the ship if it's going down. And that's really not the case because, you know, there are so many little things that we are capable of and skills that we can develop if we just take the time and, and really make the space for it. And it's not something that, you know, I think e e even now I encounter people who are almost like, you know, it, it embarrasses them in some weird way or they, they think that it's like, and it's it, no, because what, what have we done to, you know, put this much faith in a system to not collapse in some form you know, one way or another. And, you know, while there is only so much that we can all do, um, you know, for, for any of us to not try to, to do the most that we can is, is silly in my opinion. So, um, I mean, I mean, you want to at least, you know, if you're going, if you're going to die, you're going to die, but I still rather be prepared and have enough food to where, you know, I'm not going to, you know, at least last longer than everybody else, you know, uh, my family is going to be good. You know, it's, it's, I, I like to do little things, you know, every time, you know, every paycheck, go grab some, you know, some, some food that got some uh, shelf life on it, you know, go, you know, go get uh, a water purifier, go do this, go do that. And there's, and there's so much things you can do that, that are, you know, uh, cost efficient, you know, you, you ain't got to have a, you ain't got to have a, a million dollar bunker under your house and stuff like that. There's, you know, there's a ton of little things you can do, you know, um, you, everybody should have a garden anyway, you know, you know, everybody should, you know, you know, one of the most spiritual things you can do is garden and deal with the earth. So that's something somebody you're supposed to be having a garden regardless of survival or not, but you know, we're going to be talking about all of that, you know, what, you know, what to do in this situation, what would be the best thing to do, having a plan with your family. If this happens, do this, you know, 
it's um it's a lot that you know we can go over so, and speak a little bit on uh i guess in the language of a bunker what kind of uh mental or or consciousness bunker i guess however can be built by all of us uh and and i think that comes a little bit in aid with the mushroom uh, because I think that, you know, preparing for, from a conscious and, and spiritual perspective in this thing, not just a physical, is just as important. And that's really where the mushroom and the entheogenic piece ties into the elements of this event and, you know, makes it just as psychedelic as, as the entheogenic conference, because all of this has the mushroom as the, the underfabric, so. Well, uh, all of this... Oh, that's more mental than anything else. It's more your tenacity to be able to live without, you know, the everyday things that you was with, you know, um, being able to, <laughs> same thing with the mushroom, same thing with survival, same thing with martial arts, to be able to withstand it, you know, be able to, uh, you know, you know, okay, you know, we may have to go through some months of no electricity, you know, you know, being mentally strong enough to deal with that. You know, people live thousands of years without electricity, you know, all those type of things. So it's a mental thing, you know. Sometimes, you know, you practice, you gotta practice those things, okay, have drills. You know, you got a young child, okay, you know, um, you know, practice drills through the house. If, it, if something happened, you go straight to the basement. All right, go, you know, that type of stuff, you know. Uh, um, but, you know, it, it's all a mental thing. It's all, you know, you know, knowing how to relax, you know, a warrior, a martial artist is, you know, no matter what, you want to be centered, you want to be calm, you want to be relaxed, you know, know how to deal with certain situations, you know, but let's say, hold on real quick, I gotta get my charge on a little bit. Also, also too, um, just putting it out there for everybody just, you know, not on the not on the path of, you know, like not on my path. You don't, you know, what I'm saying is not, um, I really just want people to know that there's other sides to it because every time I've went to anything psychedelic, that's all people talk about. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. You know, um, you know, I, I, I applaud everybody and I'm cool with everybody that's into mushrooms, however you come at it, you know what I'm saying? You know, mushrooms is, a, is, that's what I'm saying. It's so great. But just don't get caught up in, it's just this. Because we don't, I don't know. My father didn't know. We don't know what it is. It's so vast and so powerful. It has so much information that it is unimaginable. Um, at higher doses, at the, what the stuff that I'm talking about, you can't even imagine these things. And when we talk about the beautiful stuff, I didn't see some of the most beautiful stuff on my small trips. I had to go through the ugly and the most horrific looking things to see the most beautiful things that that are there. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, you know, like I'm not, you know, because when I talk like this, people think that I'm throwing shade at, you know, um, any at the other psychedelic or anything like that. But that's totally not the case. I take my hat off to anybody who are who is dealing with any psychedelic because you know even you know at the small dosage it takes courage you know to uh, to know that you need some healing and takes and to admit all of that kind of stuff takes courage you know but you know what i'm saying as far as psychedelics is that's the beginning that's not even you know that's just putting your feet in the water there's a whole ocean you know whatever you're into if you're going to go you know if you're a musician there's music out there that's literally out of this world, you know. Um, you know, there's different planets where you can go get instruments and and bring back that to change this reality. You know, a lot of this, a lot of the, you know, the African instruments, you know, they had to be brought here. You know, they, you know, whoever it was, they went to a different planet to go get those drums and make them and send them to a specific tree and carve the drum out of that tree. You know, those were things, those things are ancient knowledge and information that is, you know, in the mushrooms because 
it it keeps records of everything. It's the record keeper. Mushrooms are the are the records. Everybody who's ever taken mushrooms, that's recorded in the mushroom. And and the information that's in it is so vast, it's unbelievable. You know, that's you know what I'm so but like I said, everybody who and if you really do have some sort of traumas, mushrooms are perfect to deal with that. You know, that's you know, it's for that too. But you hear how I said too. You know, a lot of people get caught up and that's what it is. And we've gotten to the point where we call mushrooms medicine. It's not medicine, that's diminishing the power of it. And that's the only thing that I'm trying to convey and get across to people. It didn't, you know, somehow people get offended by me just saying, no, it's more than that. People still find a way to be like, you know, he said, fuck healing. I'm like, no, I ain't never said that. That's stupid. But yeah, but I forgot what we were on here. Survival. No, yeah, mental, mental is mainly it you can have none of that stuff and just have a mental tenacity and survival situation you know because i'm i'm gonna survive that's it you know it's still better to have certain things but overall you know it's all a mental thing it's all a test you know and martial arts mushrooms survival it's all the same it's all in the same family you know baba you know baba was uh great martial artist. That's why he got into the mushrooms because the mushrooms is where the martial arts come from. You know, it, it, all the records of every martial arts is in mushrooms. You know, how to fight things that are extraterrestrial is in the mushrooms. All the, you know, whatever style, just like in the Matrix. You know, I know Kung Fu because Kung Fu is in the mushrooms. You know, all of the, the Tai Chi with the slow movement and all of that type of stuff. But it, in the mushroom world, you know, there's energy and stuff shooting out of your hands. You know, it's looking like the X-Men doing that, you know. That's all that. And that's the other levels of it. Well, and what, <laughs> and, what, we, don't, and what we, we want people to realize is, like, we're in the stage now and in the phase where you know, regulatory processes and systems are being set up in states, you know, for medical practices and applications. And, you know, you're, these patients are going to start going through and, you know, as you said, some will be there for healing for their trauma and they will certainly get it. But I wonder, and I wonder what your thoughts are on this, if, you know, some of these models and systems and places that are trying to facilitate this for a healing sense, it's just going to start you know, falling through the roof in some senses, or it's not going to be what they thought it was because you're going to have people coming out of their experiences, perhaps, um, you know, getting more than they thought that they were going to get from it. And that being from more than a healing perspective. And then what, because, you know, when we talk, we're going to get a little bit into this, I guess, in, later in the series, but, you know, this is a conversation of, transhumanism and and you know making us become something more and what happens then you know it, it... <laughs> I, feel, I mean i feel like that's 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 one of the biggest parts of it now it's just a theory of mine i feel like you know um they don't you know certain you know some of it is an absolutely good thing you know some is what needs to be done in some aspects, but I feel like some of it is, you know, get, just gathering information. Okay, we're going to test these people on the, on the substance to see what comes out of them. You know, you know, they looking for the next X-Man, you know, to, you know, oh, this, you know, he talking some shit because, you know, a lot of people behind this thing, they know stuff though, and they're looking for certain things. You know, once somebody starts waking up for real and, you know, the right person get you know, into these all states and start waking up and start unlocking some of that DNA, you know, okay, you know, we gonna have to control this person. This person can be our, you know, this person can be our black widow. This person can, you know, you know, because they, you know, they doing all that kind of stuff, you know, with, you know, they test inside Alex, they test doing the CRISPR thing, they doing and so many different 
avenues of looking at the next phase of people because they don't want any competition. Because if somebody really wakes up and starts doing things that our ancestors did for real, they in trouble. You know, those who are in control, it's all about information. It's all about seeing who knows what. That's why at every conference is at least one agent just there to see what we know, what we don't know, what we talking about, what we, you know, what we're, you know, what we're. Um, oh, hold up, hold up, Rob. I don't know if you're cutting out on everybody else's end, but <laughs> you just started cutting out and you <laughs> hold up, hold up. Can everybody, can everybody hear? Can it, somebody get a thumbs up if we can still hear all right? Cause you just cut out for me and you were like, that was a funny moment to cut out there, huh? Oh, so, yeah, it's all about. Oh, yep, your sound went. Oh, hold on. Just on my IG live too? I think I can still hear you over on this end. Uh, yep, right when he was speaking facts, exactly. Hmm. All right, well, you know, I can still hear you on this end. This is what we're going to do, folks. We got pretty deep here, didn't we? Um, I would say so. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this here short on live. And as I said at the beginning of the episode, uh, we have this recording on a Zoom call as well. And we're going to keep the chat going for just a little while longer and, uh, you know, get a little deeper in the conversation. So you're going to be able to catch the whole thing recorded on YouTube uh, this weekend regardless. Um, so just be able to be, be on the lookout. Uh, it's going to be at DR4D podcast on YouTube. Uh, go ahead and give that channel a subscribe. Uh, this is our second channel in addition to the Entheoplex Media channel, if you've already caught on to that. Uh, so, yeah, just go ahead and make sure you go check out both pages, subscribe. Um, and we really look forward to seeing you if you're getting ready to join us for this event here uh, coming up in April again to honor Ahati Baba Kalindi Iyi. Um, as normal, uh, we will have his celebration be on April 10th uh, at the beach, just like we do every year. Uh, it's going to fall on a Wednesday this year, so that's why we're having the summit be on Sunday uh, at Nova Southeastern University. And then if you're going to stay with us for the duration of the entire event, uh, you'll have two days down here in South Florida to go explore and do whatever you want uh, and actually get to enjoy the, the area a little bit uh, outside of the event. Uh, we have a ton of little beach locations that we can recommend to you uh, to keep you busy. And then you can rejoin us uh, on Wednesday for our ceremony uh, honoring Ahate Kalindi. So yes. And then I had a question here. Yep, subscribe on YouTube. The The full episode, the recording is going to be uh, the on the Dress Rehearsal for Death podcast YouTube. Uh, it's at DR4D podcast. Guys, much love. Th th this was a wonderful start to the podcast. Uh, if, you, if you joined us here, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, and getting my feet with, wet with me tonight for my first ever episode. It really, really means a lot. Um, and I can't wait to see where this thing goes. So I, have a wonderful it, night. It, it, uh, and I hope you guys check out the rest of the episode uh, uh, this weekend. Peace and love.